So I'm curious, I always like to ask this to uh, every director I speak with. If you could get the financing for anything that you want to make tomorrow, what would you make and why? Whoa, that's that's big. Uh, yeah, I, I like to start off with you know the fastball. <laughs> uh, man, I've always wanted to make a movie like underwater. Uh, you know, like some sort of underwater research, something you know, like a station or something like that. You know, where people are having to move around in little pods. Uh, that would be. So I don't know what the movie is, but that's the the general idea. Also, it's a good excuse to call James Cameron and be like, hey, I need to That's talk it, to hey. you about underwater stuff. Jimmy, uh, sorry I haven't <laughs> answered your, your texts. Uh, I've been a little busy. Thank you. <laughs> right. Um, one of the things I really enjoyed about uh, this film is that it doesn't have a villain. It's a, about people mm. dealing with a bad situation. Uh, can you sort of talk about that aspect of it? Yeah, you know, that's part of the little trilogy that um, my co-writer and I worked on. Um, the first one was that we wrote was this, Stowaway. Uh, the second one was Arctic, which was initially set on Mars. Uh, so that was part of more of a trilogy. And then the third one was called Grounded, uh, which was people trying to get to Mars, but there's stuff getting in the way. Um, so yeah, you know, for those three films, we wanted the same kind of idea. The, the fact that there isn't a Machiavellian mustache twirling villain uh there isn't any kind of of bad guy it's just a bad situation in my life i haven't had an antagonist I, i've only had i've had a lot of troubles but I, i've they have all been the environment you know um sometimes literally when i've been trying to shoot a film in 19 days in iceland uh, you know so uh, yeah, you know, that's what I connected with the most. And that's what I, my co-writer connected with the most. And that's where um, we decided to take these three films. I'm always curious about the editing process because it's the final rewrite. Uh, did the film change at all in the editing room? Did you have a much longer cut? Well, my co-writer is actually the, my editor, which, you know, scares a lot of producers because they're like, oh, no, no, you need somebody who is in a hole somewhere, who doesn't know anything about production, anything about the script. Just give them the footage and then they'll come up with something incredible. Um, but, you know, the, the approach that we have always taken, uh, you know, with YouTube and with the short films and when you just like trying to get it done, you have to be very, very, very OK with just cutting things. You know, like, oh, we spent like two days shooting this one scene. Get rid of it. No big deal. Um, so when that's the approach, uh, then you can do it on set. So literally with Arctic, we needed him on set because on set, there, there wasn't a set for that, uh, but you know, in, in the snow, uh, because you know, you, you don't have time to do reshoots. You're not gonna get Mads Mikkelsen to regrow his beard and you're not gonna like, you know, wait one year until you have the snow again to reshoot something. Um, so yeah, you know, it, it was something where it was kind of like laying the, the tracks in front of us as we went along. Uh, we still, we, thankfully we had a little bit more time um, so we were, he was there on set the whole time too. He had his own little office, sometimes right next to where we were shooting. And that was nice because we saw it coming together. Sometimes I could show the actors something um, to be like, this is how the scene ended up. Let's shoot what comes after that. And sometimes you're watching the edit and you're saying, oh, you know what? This interaction between Anna Kendrick and Daniel the Kim is working so well, let's write another scene with the two of them. Um, so we did, you know, we, there was one day where we had a little bit of extra time. We wrote an extra scene, handed it to the actors. They memorized it right there on the spot and we shot it. And it's one of the better scenes in the film, in my opinion. Do you think they made it to Mars? Um, and how did you decide where to end the film? Where to end my films is always the biggest question. There's always a, a month long discussion about which frame exactly, uh, especially with Arctic. Uh, you know, uh, we're, we're going to, to cut on. Uh, so, so with this one, you know, especially the voiceover at the end um, and everything that happens right then and there, that was such a difficult thing to write. And that was something that we wrote after everything was done um, and that we knew we wanted to write after everything was done because we wanted to watch the film until that final little voiceover because we wanted it to be as hopeful as that bleak ass ending is or can be, you know? Uh, 
you know, we wanted to be as hopeful as possible. Um, and yeah, I, I wanted it to, to be open. Uh, you know, some people, if you're more of a pessimist, uh, you, you're probably going to see it as like, okay, well, they, they never make it to Paris. And some people who are more of the op optimists, uh, they'll probably see it as, uh, oh yeah, yeah, no, they'll, they'll figure out a way to fix Anna by the end of it. Got it. I, I have to go. Congrats on the movie. I hope you're making something again soon. Thank you very much.